remember September the 11th. Following his impassioned address to Parliament Hill yesterday, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky gave an encore in front of U.S. Congress today, demanding more military aid and sanctions against Russia. We propose that the United States sanctions all politicians in the Russian Federation who remain in their offices and do not uh, uh, cut ties with those who are responsible for the aggression against Ukraine. While airstrikes continue to rain fire, destroy and kill many in Ukraine, the country's request for a NATO-imposed no-fly zone are denied again from Western leaders, like Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, over fears of escalation. These are heartbreaking decisions and choices that we have to make, and I can assure you that NATO is constantly talking about what more we can do, what solutions we can bring. Trudeau says humanitarian, refugee, and lethal weaponry support won't stop. And south of the border, U.S. President Joe Biden is sending an additional $800 million worth of anti-aircraft and lethal weapons instead. Make Putin pay the price, weaken his position, while strengthening the hand of the Ukrainians on the battlefield and at the negotiating table. Together with our allies and partners, we're going to stay the course. The NATO leaders say ongoing shelling from Russian forces have targeted schools, hospitals, and apartment buildings. This video from a Ukrainian television shows bodies scattered on the ground in Cherniv. The U.S. Embassy in Kyiv claimed that 10 people were shot and killed while waiting in line for bread. More deaths were reported in places like Kharkiv and in besieged Mariupol. A bomb struck a theater with people sheltered inside. The amount of international humanitarian law violations is definitely the, the signal for NATO involvement. involvement. If you're not ready to provide a no-fly zone, then be bold, creative with alternatives, and be quick. Kyiv resident Lilia Slobodyan fled the city in February to Warsaw, Poland, prior to the invasion beginning over fears of a lengthy war. She says her family, who couldn't leave, is currently safe in western Ukraine, but face alarms where they are. Tonight, air siren was on for four hours, so my parents had to spend four hours in the basement where it's quite cold. Slobodyan says she works for an advocacy group on reform policy in Kyiv and echoes Zelensky's message to Canada and the U.S. And if we do not do anything with it right now in Ukraine, it can easily repeat in any other country.